welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us here this morning. We welcome you on the first Sunday in August. We welcome all who are here on this sixth day of August 2023. I hope all is well and everyone is doing well also. So we welcome you who are here and those watching online, we welcome you as well. So let's all stand and Thou comes down and he leads us in our call to worship, hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus, and our opening prayer. Precious name we pray. 
Amen. 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 You may be seated. Just a few things in the way of announcement of things that are taking place and are happening, of course. Uh, this coming Thursday, the beginning here in St. Tammany Parish with school, a half uh, from the beginning of the alphabet from A to L, and then Friday, August 11th, the other half from M to Z. They, they also uh, go to school on that day. And then on the uh, 14th, they all go back to school together. Uh, the teachers are reminiscing over that. How's that working out, Susie? What do you think? I need another couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all the teachers feel the same way, right? Mm -hmm. Not ready for this. But anyhow, so it begins in earnest, and also understand uh, school zone begins also on the 10th here for us. So I know we're not used to having the school zones in the morning and the evening, so be aware of all that's going on um, with that. Um, the 16th of August, uh, we will not have a Wednesday night Bible study, so for those who come on Wednesday night, uh, know that so it's not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, uh, no Wednesday night service on the 16th. Uh, September the 4th is Labor Day, the unofficial end of summer, but not the heat. Maybe the heat, I don't know. Maybe by then we'll have a little break with the heat and it'll be maybe even 5 or 10 degrees cooler, which would be good if we could get that. But anyhow, and then, of course, there's no school on Labor Day here at St. County Parish. Um, this coming week, a few people will be celebrating birthdays, uh, just so you know. Myself, I'll be celebrating my birthday on a Tuesday. Uh, Clarence is celebrating his birthday on the 9th, which is Wednesday. Um, then my grandson, Hunter, on the 11th. Uh, Janet is also on the 11th. Yeah, I was, I was going to make sure you knew about it as well. So Huz is also uh, on the 11th of, of August. And then a couple other birthdays uh, coming up in uh, by Saturday is Renee is, is celebrating her birthday this coming Saturday, as well as her daughter-in-law, Laura. Both of them will be celebrating their birthday on the same day. And then uh, Kay, Kaya, Kaya um, I think Linda's grandson or whatever is, or somebody's grandson having his on the 12th as well. This coming Friday, if anybody here at the church would like to come, uh, everyone is invited to celebrate, and I purposely didn't put him because his birthday also would be celebrated on the 11th. It's Kim right there. He'll be celebrating 90 years old, is that right? Right. 90 years old. And so he's celebrating this Friday, and so his family is coming in, and they're going to be having something back in the kitchen here at Bayou Baptist Church. So. Anybody from the church would like to come and celebrate with them to have some cake and finger food uh, and then join in to celebrating it. You're, you're invited to come at 1 o'clock this coming Friday. Also, do not bring presents. Your presence, if you come, is a good present for Kim. So if you would like to come, Feel free to come, anyone from the church, this coming Friday, 1 o'clock, in the kitchen area, as they celebrate Kim's 90th birthday, uh, this coming Friday. Anything else with that, Miss uh, Henry? No, you got it all right. Okay, good. I'm glad I got it right, then. That's good. Uh, and our, our kids are doing it all, so I don't even know what we're eating. I well, that's good. They, should, they should be doing it all. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That, that is awesome. But anyway, so um, so that's an invitation to everybody. If you'd like to come, you can come. Uh, find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Any other announcements or anything else that is going on, <coughs> taking place uh, this coming week that we should know about of anything else? Uh, again, I think the only thing really that's going to be taking place with any um, anything at all will be the beginning and starting of school this coming Thursday and Friday as parents and teachers and all get ready for the new school year uh, that will begin again by Thursday. So uh, 
And so we'll have those things going on and taking place. If nothing else, Mr. Al will come at this time and lead us in another hymn as we sing unto the Lord. Hymn number 559, Rescue the Perishing. <laughs> Where 
uh, more and more premature babies just are not making it, even without modern technology uh, today. So just be in prayer for the many, many uh, mothers where they have lost a baby due to being premature. Um, I tell people that I'm a walking miracle. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preemie myself from back in 1953. The only thing I know was I was small enough to fit in a cigar box. That's what I was told. That's how small uh, I was. And by the grace of the Lord, I'm still here at 70 years old. Like, wow, okay. So I'm a walking miracle in two ways. One, physically as well as spiritually. So it's an awesome thing what the Lord does. But pray for the many, many people. Also, the as it's still summertime, and families are still dealing with uh, swimming pools and beaches and different other things <clears throat> where there are drownings of little ones. Um, and not any fault, I think, of the parents. It's just that they, we have to understand that they do wander off within a heartbeat. And so let me caution those who have little ones that, and especially around the water, you need to watch them every second. Not every minute, every second. I mean, just watch. Don't go off and do something and think everything is okay. But you need to watch the little ones, especially around the water, whether it's a swimming pool, whether it's at the beach, or whether it's around the bayou, or even if the child is not even swimming <laughs> and they're around a body of water. Keep eyes on the little ones uh, for that. But just pray for the many people who have uh, thus far, who have lost a little one due to uh, the drowning of a little one. That's always heartbreaking when that takes place. Um, again, pray for all those on our prayer list. Just remember them in prayer. Uh, the many, many people as well. Uh, the many, many people I know that Ginger would also relate. Uh, Linda and Mike Hemel, uh, as well as many others as well. Uh, Johnny Garrett's mom and stepdad. Uh, Francis and Jake. Pray for both of them with their health issues and what they also deal with. Uh, Mr. Billy Lynchett, as well as his family, remember them in prayer and pray for them also. We had many. Pray for the many people who are out in this extreme heat. Uh, many have no choice because of outside working or whatever the case may be, but pray for the many people who are dealing with the heat and the effects of it as well. So pray, pray for, for that and remember them also in prayer. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share, if anything, with us this morning. Anyone or anything? Miss Susie. Just remember me this week. This is a little bit different than my normal stuff job. So just kind of, just remember me this week. <laughs> Will do. Absolutely. Remember you as well as all the right. teachers, all of them. I mean, it, it, it is, uh, I, I, and, and you know, and you never know what you're going to encounter or what you're going to experience because every year is something always different. So pray, pray for, pray for the teachers uh, as well as the school kids, all the school kids, all the way from kindergarten all the way up into college. Uh, Abby is off at, at, at junior college, so remember her in prayer. Will will be off. He'll be going back as well. And Logan too is going. Uh, the school as well. So pray for all who are in school. My granddaughter, Megan, she'll be starting up again uh, at Southeastern. So pray for the many, many people who, are, who will be going back or are going to be in the school system as well. Appreciate that. Yes. Other prayer requests? Yes. Um, Ms. Linda. Yes. Yeah, pray for Linda, Felix, Sue, and all the rest of the family members with all that's going on. And Linda's really doing good with it. She's just happy because mom is not in that state anymore. So appreciate that. Yeah, she, they, they still need our prayers as far as with everything. And um, pray for Linda's daughter as well, Kelly. She, she is right now without a job, and it's, and it's kind of hard uh, because of all that goes on with that. So pray for Kelly as well. With, with what they deal with, so pray for them. Other prayer requests, and your family too in Tennessee, remember them also yeah, in prayer. Uh, Stephen too, because he starts to school. Okay. Uh, this week. Yeah, that's going to be a little... Is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. 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 Yeah, Wednesday.
Yeah, you, yours is going to be a little different this year. Yeah, you, you've been homeschooling them all this time. And so now Stephen is going to be in school. And, and you remember now, Stephen has Asperger, so he's kind of, you know, he's, he, he's it's a little bit different for, for, the, for those in this board with all of that. So we'll be praying for, for him as well as all uh, who, are, who are artistic. Other prayer request, uh, Tinka. I have a couple of unspoken prayers. Sure. And also, on behalf of Ginger, who is not here to request it, uh, please continue to keep our family in prayer. We'll do. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Yes. Anyone else? Think. I mean, uh, Janet. Uh, traveling versus for everybody who's traveling, even back and forth to work. Yes, absolutely. And um, all the children. Yes. Absolutely. Your will. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Anything else? Anyone? Miss Sarah. Unsaved souls. Yes, absolutely. I always pray for those who do not know the Lord. I appreciate that. Um, so we lift up the many, many unspoken prayers. I'm sure you have many. Pray for family, friends, and other people who do not know the Lord. So we always remember them in prayer. Uh, what's going on? Pray for each other during the course of the week. We never know what we're going to burn into or what's going to take place. Always ask the Lord when you get up in the morning to help me make it through the day because we don't know what's going to happen or what we're going to encounter from day to day. Sometimes it's nothing and then sometimes things do come up and happen as well. So again, pray for Ginger Dolores and also for Al as well. Remember all three of them in prayer. So pray, pray, pray for them and what they deal with, and many others who are dealing with different health issues. And, and again, for those who are not here with us, just, just pray for them as well. Pray for Tracy back there. Tracy's still having a battle with his, with his sleep apnea thing. He still can't get used to it. Is that right, Trace? No. <laughs> he said he still doesn't like it. And, he, and, and so, forth. so pray for Tracy as he deals with that. Uh, with his sleep apnea and, and, and the sleep path that he has um, as well. So just pray for him. Um, so yes, so just pray for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, and many things that are going on and taking place in all of our lives. We do lift up the many, many people who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. Some are sick, some are not. Some are not feeling well, but we lift up others in some more way, and we pray for them. We pray for the many people who do not know Jesus Christ, whomever they may be, a friend, family member, a co-worker, or even someone we may be, meet just very briefly, and we share the gospel with them. We pray for the many, many people in the long lost souls. We lift up all of the unspoken prayer requests that the people have lifted up in private to you, and ask for your help. Again, we lift up the many, many that were spoken of this morning. Many, some are dealing with different health issues and health problems, and we pray and we ask for grace, mercy, and for your healing power. Traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling. Watch over them, help them, and be with them. For those that are struggling and going through difficulties, whatever may be going on, we lift them up. For Johnny and Debbie Garrett Jr. as they're in Kentucky, be with them, Lord, and help them. For Shell and Brandy Armstrong, we lift up both of these ladies and ask for your help. We pray for all the teachers who are beginning a new year in the school year. And we pray for them, but we pray also not just for the teachers, but all the students from kindergarten all the way through college. And we pray for help, guidance, and leadership in their lives as well. Again, be with us this morning. Help us, watch over us, and and guide us, and, and Lord, open our hearts and our minds to your word, and give us, Lord, all that we need today that we can grow in grace and in truth. And Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that does not know you as Lord and Savior, whether they're here or whether they're watching online, if they do not know you personally as Lord and as Savior, I pray today they'll come to know you. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes again and leads us in our 
Offertory Hymn, Hymn number 483, Footsteps of Jesus. <clears throat>
take your Bibles this morning as we continue our study and look into Revelation. Today we look at the second letter in Revelation chapter 2 and in verses 8 through 11. Now also understand as we're going through the book of Revelation, if I have a long, understand that there are going to be differences of opinion concerning the different people. And yours may not go along with what I say up here, and that's okay too. Because there may be two or three different uh, interpretations as far as what we read as we're going through uh, the book of Revelation. So here we're looking at the church in Smyrna. Now Smyrna relates to the word myrrh. And myrrh in Smyrna, in Smyrna itself means bitter. And that's what myrrh has a, has a uh, significance of. Now, the, the city of Smyrna back then was said to be the most beautiful city in Asia. It was an awesome place. It did have a lot of flaws in it, but it was beautiful. <clears throat> it was a Roman colony. There were a lot of Jews living in Smyrna that lived in that city, but it was also a city where there were quite a few temples of the Greek gods, Zeus, Diana, Aphrodite, and other Greek gods as well. And they even had a temple they had built to the Roman emperor, where they worshiped the Roman emperor. And all who proclaim Caesar is Lord, Caesar is God. And yet in the midst of all of that, there was a group of Christians who remained faithful to the Lord who did not worship these Greek gods, the Roman emperor. And they met together. And you know, the sad part about it is they didn't have a, a, a basically a part where the Christians could work, worship. They had to worship either in a cave or in a catacomb. And they had to do it in such a way as to where it was more or less in secret so that they would not be persecuted for their faith. So we read here the second letter given to the church by the Lord in the church of Smyrna. And notice, first of all, in verses 8 and 9 of chapter 2, notice the commendation that is given to the people in the church in Smyrna. To the angel, now again, the angel, of course, is the minister, the pastor, the elder, or the person who is in charge of giving the message or spreading the word within the church. So to the church, uh, to the angel of the church in Smyrna, I write, these are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions, your poverty, even though I know this, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. So here we see the combination. See, if we look at this, notice what, what is taking place here. There is nothing that escapes the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ as he is in heaven. And he looks down and he sees what's going on in the city of Smyrna. He says, I see all of this. I, I know your afflictions. I know your poverty. I know what you're dealing with. I know what's taking place there. And he knows, he knows every detail that is going on. Not just with them, but also those who are opposing. Those who are causing the persecution as well. And he's letting the church know now that he is the first and the last. That he, he is the one who died on Calvary and was buried and raised again on the third day. See, he's letting you know, I am the Jesus who you are worshiping, who you are proclaiming to other people. I am the first, the last. I am the one. I, I am he. And, and he sees the difficulties that the believers are going through, the suffering, the persecution, all because of one thing, faith. Their faith 
in Jesus. They're not being persecuted because of maybe a job they're working or because of what they are doing on the outside. It's because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this came not only from the Jews who did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Some of this was happening as well. But it was also from the Roman government. This is a Roman colony. And the Christians were being persecuted. And, 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 as, and again, as we know, he's, as he says here, I know your afflictions. I know your poverty. I know. I see all of this. And he's letting the believers know. I know what you're dealing with. Why? Because they're not compromising their faith. See, they're not hailing Caesar. Oh, hail Caesar. They're not doing that. Instead, they're maintaining their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're not compromising. We see a lot of compromising today, especially not only on the job, but also with religion and also what has to do with God's word. We see quite a bit of that in different denominations. Even in the Southern Baptist realm, people compromise their faith. And they think it's no big deal, but yet it is. And the Lord sees the fact that, hey, don't compromise your faith. Because, as I've mentioned before, I'll say it again. If you compromise your faith in one area, Will you not compromise it in another area? Will you not say, well, it's really no big deal. But yet it is a big deal. It's a big deal when it comes to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he sees their affliction. He knows what they're going through. And if a believer back then, now here was the other thing. If a believer, and they knew that person was a believer, the Roman government would step in and basically take anything that belonged to them by force and put them in poverty. They had no rights because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if they were to say, Caesar is Lord, then they can have and they can keep all that they have. But many of them said, no, we're not compromising. We are paying honor and tribute to the Lord Jesus Christ. And even if it means us giving up everything we own, so be it. And he says, I see. I, notice he says, I know you're afflicting your poverty. Yeah, even in their poverty, what were they? They were rich. How can they be rich if they take everything from them? How can that be? Isn't that a contradiction? I'm in poverty. I'm afflicted, I have hardly anything, but yet the Lord says, you are rich. And he says this because they were rich in spirit and in their faith. See, that is something the government cannot take from you or me today. They can't take away our faith unless we give it to them. They can't take away the Holy Spirit or our spirit that lives in us unless we give it to them, unless we compromise. Amen. Even people at work. Don't compromise your faith. I know you say, well, I may lose my job, okay? So what is it you're going to lose? Your job or your faith? These people here were saying, I'm not going to lose my faith. I'll lose everything else. And the Lord says, I see this. And you are rich, rich in your spirit and rich in their faith. And they remain faithful. And, and notice the people, not only the Roman government, but notice he says, I know the slander of those who are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. What does this mean here? You see, what, what's taking place here? See, what's happening is the Jews who did not believe in Jesus Christ, but they still believe in Jehovah God now, but they did not believe in Jesus, and he says they're really not Jews. Why? Because they're going against the Son of God. Because they're going against Jesus Christ, who is the second part of the Trinity, since they rejected him as the Messiah. So, in essence, they were not really Jews at all. Not only that, notice it says in there, but or a temp or a synagogue of Satan. 
In other words, they didn't have a synagogue there specifically worshiping Satan. They were a synagogue of Satan. They themselves became a building or a vessel for Satan, being used by Satan to attack and destroy anyone belonging to, back then it was either the way or Christianity. And so they became this vessel, just like the serpent. Remember at the beginning, when Adam and Eve were tempted? Who did it? It was the serpent. Satan was in that serpent. And that serpent became a vessel for Satan's attack upon Adam and Eve. And Satan does the same thing. And he's been doing that. Since the beginning of time, nothing has changed with Satan. He will use people and anything else he can to attack anyone who is of faith and knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And even today, we have more and more attacks upon people who belong to Jesus Christ. And it happens each and every day. And so they have become this vessel. So consequently, what is taking place here? It is Satan that is instigating all of this. It is the devil who is doing all that we see and all that is taking place concerning what is, what is happening here in, in this here. So he's instigating all of this work. And yet remember now, those who are not for Jesus or against him as well. Remember what was said by Jesus himself over in Matthew chapter 12 and in verse 30. He himself said the same thing. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. So you see, it's either you're with the Lord or you're not. And these so-called Jews were not really with the Lord Jesus. And they would go to the synagogue not to worship Jehovah God. In many cases, they would go there and they would plan their attacks on how, what they would do against the Christians in Samaria. This was their main objective. It's almost like what Paul, who was, who, who later, uh, who was Saul, who later became Paul, he, like he did the same thing before he came to know the Lord. He, too, worked for Satan at a time until he himself came to know the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And he also persecuted any who belonged to Christianity or to the way as well. And then also, remembering too, what was said in John chapter 8 and 42 to 47 concerning the Jews of Jesus' day. Here's what Jesus, if you remember, what Jesus said concerning the Jews even of, of his day over in John chapter 8 and 42. He said, If God were your father, you would love me, for well, I came from God, and now I am, I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. My language is not clear to you. Why? Because you are unable to hear what I say. Why? Because you belong to your father, the devil. And you carry out your father's desires. You see, this is what's happening in some murder as well. These Jews are carrying out the desires of Satan to persecute and to do away with these people who call themselves Christians. See, this is what was going on there. And Jesus says, I see all that's going on. I see what the Jews are doing. I see what other people are doing and what is taking place as well. The, all that's taking place. And the, and the Jews, again, since they are not really for Jesus, they have become non-Jews. Now, why do I say that? They become nine Jews in here. Well, over in Romans chapter 2 and in verse 28 and following, here's what the Word of God says concerning that. A man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly, not, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise is not from men, but from God. 
So you see, they, they became non-Jews. Why? Because inwardly, there was no relationship with God. They did not know Jesus Christ. They did not know God. And they were going against the Son of God, the second part of the Trinity. See, it's not how you look on the outside. It's what you, it's in the inside. See, a person can look just like this. Dress nice. Look real good. But on the inside, if Christ is not there, it's empty. It's dead. It's gone. And that's what he's saying here. These Jews are not really Jews. They don't, they, they're not really believing in what in the Son of God whom God had sent. They have denounced Jesus Christ. And by denouncing Jesus as God, they are denouncing Jehovah God as well. And they're actually working for Satan. And this is what is going on here as well. Remember, again. What did, what, did, what did Jesus say again in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 27 and following? And he talked about, again, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious people. And he talked to them as well. And this is probably familiar with you as well. He says, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs. You look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside, where it counts, on the inside, in the heart, you are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And, and, and so he says that. You know, in, in Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, when Samuel was going to... Find, when the Lord sent him to find him to replace it, to replace Saul as king. Saul was still king. But, but, but Saul did a devastating thing, and the Lord says, enough is enough. I want you to go and anoint someone else as king. And watch what the Lord tells Samuel to look for. As Samuel does the same thing as, as looking on the outside, notice what, what was told to him in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. When they arrived... Uh, Surely the Lord is anointed, anointed stand here before the Lord. And he was, in other words, Samuel was about to anoint someone else, one of uh, Jesse's other sons. And the Lord told uh, Samuel in, in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, But the Lord says to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things of man at at the Lord does not look at the things man looked at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You see, it's all about the heart. See, when we stand before God, what does he look at? He looks at our heart. He looks to see if we've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. He looks to see if we've had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He looks to see if we have been cleansed and made whole again. But he already knows that before we even stand before him. See, no matter how you may... See, and it says we're all going to stand before the Lord and give an account of ourselves. But he looks at the heart. Even today, he looks at the heart. From out of the heart comes these things. Out of the heart. And the Lord looked at the heart of these Christians in Smyrna. And there he says, you are rich. And the reason they were rich is because their heart was right before God. It's because they worshiped and praised God. They were faithful to Lord Jesus Christ in spite of the fact they were being persecuted. But yet, that was not the end. Notice verse 10. Notice the command now that Jesus is giving to the people in Smyrna. As they're being already being persecuted, notice what he says is going to take place. Notice his command. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. You, they're going through a bunch now. But he says, there's more to come. Don't be afraid about what you are to suffer. I'll tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will, be, you will suffer persecution for ten 
days. This is amazing. They're going through a whole bunch now, and he's telling them, it's not over with yet. There is still more to come after he commands them for their faithfulness, but he wants them to know and warns them, there is more coming. This is not the end. Things, other things are going to happen, and you're going to be persecuted for it. And notice the battle. Who is the battle with? Satan. It's with Satan. Notice he, he says specifically here. Now, I know what he's saying, Satan, but, he, but Satan could have used those people, those vessels again, those Jews, who have become a synagogue for Satan, a vessel for Satan. They are going to continue to persecute. And it's going to get even worse. And he notice, he says it in here. He says, I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will, be, you will suffer persecution for ten days. See, God, God is going to allow Satan to continue to persecute and to suffer. Just like he did, just like God allowed Job to be tested. Just like God allowed... Peter to be tested, and the other disciples. Well, we are no different. There are going to be times where God's going to allow Satan and even vessels for Satan to test us, to put us through a very rigorous test. In some cases, it might be a mild test. And why does he allow this? In order that we can be strengthened in the Lord in order that we can show others our genuineness, our realness, if you want to call it that, but show that we are really Christians by us not succumbing to that and not giving in to the temptations that Satan and, and all the things that will, will throw at us and take place. Remember, remember what the Word of God says. You know, we, we, we always have to look at the Word of God. And in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of the evils in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so when the day of evil comes you will be able to stand your ground and after they have done everything to stand. So you see, we're, we're in this battle here and he's telling them the battle is just not physically not just physical but it's also spiritual. And we've been in a spiritual battle since when? Since the fall of Adam and Eve. We've been in this spirit and we're in a battle. Even if it's people who are coming at, after you and attacking you because of your faith, they are actually working for Satan. They're actually his vessel. And, he, and you're going through this, why? To test you. To see, hey, am I truly who I say I am? Will I be able to overcome? And yes, we can. And they, and they had to know this as well. And these things are going to happen. You know, we're blessed. We truly are. Many of us here in the U.S., we're blessed. We're not, as, we're not getting attacked like the, some people over maybe in the Middle East or in other countries as well because of their faith. But one day it's going to happen. One day it's going to take place. And we're going to have to make a stand. And we're going to have to decide, who do I stand for? Do I make a stand for the Lord? Or do I compromise and say, ah, it's no big deal. So what if I just kneel on one leg? It's okay. But it's not okay. So, but here the church in Smyrna did not. And they themselves continued and they found strength in the Lord. You know, it, it tells us in James chapter 1 from the Word of God, in verses 2 and following, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing... Again, testing of your faith develops what? Perseverance. And perseverance and, and to develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that what? You may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. 
You see, there are reasons why the Lord allows it to mature up your faith so you can grow stronger in the faith. And then also, what is written from the Word of God in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7, here too, it encourages us and tells us as well concerning from the Word of God. It here, it relates from God's Word in 1 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 6. It says, in this way, in this, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, here we go again, your faith may be a greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may prove to be what? Genuine and may result in the praise and the glory and honor of Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, so there are times when things are going to happen. You wonder, why? It's so that your faith can grow. And so others can see your faith. And others need to see it. This is what was happening here in Smyrna as well. Now, what are these ten days about? Notice he says here. He says, and some of you will be put into prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Now, is this a literal ten days? It may be. Some, some think it may be a literal ten days. Others think it could represent the ten emperors of, the Rome, of Rome who will, co who will come and go over the years, and these ten emperors will indeed put a lot of persecution upon those who are in Smyrna. Or, again, it could be just a, a period of ten days of, of major assault by Satan concerning what will take place. Now, whatever way you want to look at this, whether it's ten days. Now, ten is always the number of what? Completion. It's a number of completion. Um, in my personal opinion and in reading to it and also looking at history, I believe that what, what, what already took place here was, in fact, the ten Roman emperors that were and they did persecute the people in Smyrna because this was the stronghold for the temple of emperors for, for them. And, and, and so what happened is all the way from Nero all the way to the last emperor of Rome, they indeed persecuted the Christians in Smyrna for their faith. So again, in my personal, and this is my opinion, okay, looking at history and also through other people who have done this, I, I want to say that it refers to the 10 years of the, per, of the pagan persecution by the Roman emperors that controlled this colony. Now, I will not disagree with you, nor will I get upset when you say, well, I think it's just 10 days of, of mass persecution. It could be. Or you may think that it's uh, uh, maybe a, uh, something else that will take place in 10 years, whatever. But I think it's the 10, the 10 of those that is coming about with the Roman emperor as well. But he lets it know. Persecution is coming. It's going to happen. It's happening and it's taking place as well. And he says that. And then we have the counsel that he tells the people. Notice in verse 10 and 11 what he wants them to do. Notice the, the advice, the counsel that here he gives them. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you a crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. These are the final words, basically, to the church in Smyrna. Right? And what does it take place here? And notice, the words here was to the church, to those who what? To, who proved themselves to be faithful. Who, who proved themselves to be genuine in the faith. And notice, no reprimand was given to the church in Smyrna. None whatsoever. And that here Jesus promised them that he will protect them, but they will still face death. He will still be with them. And he will give them the strength and everything they need in order 
to fight off or even face what is coming. Again, more is coming. And he says, I'll be there with you and for you as well. And to those who remain faithful, even unto death, he says, you will receive a crown of life. Now, this is not a salvation by works oriented thing. Many people will look at this and say, oh, well, if I'm faithful unto death, I will be given a crown of life because of... No, this is to prove, again, this is not to be mistaken for a works for salvation, but because of their faith in the one who died and is now alive, to the one who is first and who is last, they have persevered. And by their perseverance, they have proven that their faith is genuine. And that their hope in the Lord is genuine as well. And they will not face the second death. And the second death is being thrown into the lake of fire. And he says, I will give you a crown of life. In other words, he said, you will not be hurt at all by the second death. Which is hell and Hades. Both will be thrown into the lake of fire. That is the second death. The first death is the physical death. The second death is the spiritual death. And he says you will not be hurt. You will, live, you will live with him. And you will receive a crown of life because of the genuineness of your faith. Because you have proven yourself by going through the trials. And you have, have continued on. You know, in Colossians chapter 1... In verse 21, it says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your mind because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation if you continue in your established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. And this is the gospel that you heard and have been proclaimed to every creature under heaven in which I, Paul, have become a servant. You see, if you remain faithful. And then the Lord Jesus as well. He says basically the same thing in Matthew chapter 10 in verse 17. He says, Be on guard against men. They will hand you over to local council and for you and them in their synagogue. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. You see the purpose of God? He's sending them purposely before them. To what? To show the proof, the genuineness of their faith. But when you're arrested, don't worry about what you say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will be for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And then later he says, and here's what he says later on to them as well. He says, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. So you see, we have this thing here where Jesus says, I will be with you, and if you remain faithful, I will be there for you, and you will not be hurt by the second death. Now, unlike the first letter we read with the church of Ephesus, this church of Smyrna, they did not leave their first love. They continued to have fellowship and relationship with their first love, which was Jesus Christ. They did not allow the false teachers like we saw with the first one, with the Nicolaitans. These Nicolaitans, we're going to see, are going to come into another church as well and do damage also. And the Nicolaitans did not lead them, lead, them, lead them astray. And today, in spite of the fact that many, many people, and I'm going to use that word, many, many people, even today, are compromising the faith or compromising the word of God we see the consequences that have taken place in our society today because of it. 
And I'm sure the consequences back then in Smyrna were basically the same way. But we had these faithful few people, and I mean a few, a remnant, that remained faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord praised them because of their genuineness and their faithfulness. And today, as well, the Lord wants us to remain strong, faithful, and to, and to ask Him for grace, for strength, for help, and for guidance, as we, as we too, will face temptations, trials, and other things as well. Be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you today proclaim to be your Lord and your Savior. Don't allow others to Take away what you know to be true. Keep it if anywhere. Keep it in your heart. Keep it here. And keep that relationship with Jesus Christ in your heart. But I pray that you do have that relationship. And that if you do not have that relationship with Jesus Christ, if Christ does not live in your heart today, I pray that God has spoken to you this morning and that you can come to know Him and accept Him as Lord and as Savior. And begin a walk with him today to where you can be strong, you can be mighty, and that you can overcome anything Satan and others may throw at you as well. But that only comes by knowing Jesus Christ, not intellectually, but in your heart, but right here. And if God is speaking to you today, you come. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, again, if there's anyone here this morning who does not truly know you, does not have a relationship with you, I pray, Lord, that you have spoken to them, you have opened their heart, their mind, and that you are saying unto them, come. And I pray they'll come at this time so that they can have a walk with you that is genuine and that is real, and that others can see Christ in them as well. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if God has spoken to you, you come as we sing him number 294. Have thine own way. <laughs>
I know sometimes it's hard out there because we have family members or friends or co-workers and others who are not of like faith, who are against. And I know it's hard sometimes to display it. But be faithful to the Lord and allow Him to lead you, guide you, and direct you as well. Be like the Church of Smyrna. Be faithful. Be genuine in your faith and walk with the Lord daily. We invite you to come back Wednesday night as we have our Bible study this coming Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30. Food and fellowship for all who come from 6 to 6.30. All are welcome to come this coming Wednesday for that. If not, we invite you to come back next Sunday. Again, Bible study from 9 to 10 on Sunday morning, and then worship time from 10.30 to 11.30. And again, all are welcome to come for that. Again, just let me reiterate that this coming Friday, for all who would like to come, you can join in the back in the kitchen at 1 o'clock to the celebration of Kim's 90th birthday with the family. You can come and enjoy his, uh, with the family and them. And please don't bring any presents. Just come and come as you are, jeans and a shirt or whatever. Come comfortable. You know, I know it's hot out there, so you don't have to come in any kind of thing is spectacular. Just if you like to come, just come this coming Friday at one o'clock. And all invited for that. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. And again, pray for the people who are not with us, who are not here with us. We have quite a few that are out, quite a few that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Pray for them and, and always pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as well. Pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Al, here is a closing prayer. Please, sir. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, thanking you for your word. Knowing, Father, as we look at your word, as we hear your word, we'll grow. And, Father, we grow stronger in our faith. And now I believe and I trust in you. Lord, I pray that you be with us now. We do go our separate ways. Keep us, watch over us, bring us back to worship again together. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.